G'day, I'm Danny. I'm here to take you through the five steps necessary to install a sediment fence. These should be included in your erosion and sediment control plan. Sediment is one of the worst pollutants that can get into our waterways, so it's everyone's job to try and keep it out. By following your erosion and sediment control plan, you'll help to do that. It'll also provide some other benefits, such as improving retention of topsoil, reducing downtime, avoiding regulatory interest, and generally boosting your company's image. First we'll take a look at the location of your sediment fence on site. Now this is a relatively flat site. If you're dealing with a sloping site, there are some other issues to be aware of, so take a look at our erosion and sediment control guide for more information on that. So we're going to take a look at equipment. Paul's here to take you through what we'll need. Great, thanks Dan. Basically I'm going to run through health and safety first, which is specific to your site you're working on. In this instance I've got my hat on, our eyes, you may need ears depending if you've got heavy machinery working. Hi Viz, you may need long sleeves, gloves, long pants and steel toes. Safety gear, tape measure, sledgehammer or post driver, trench spade and or a digger blade, level, pliers, hammer, wipe posts and caps, tie wire, fencing fabric, sharp builder's knife, plastic clips. We've checked safety, we've got our gear sorted, we've double checked our erosion and sediment control plan to make sure we're in the right place. Now the first step is to dazzle and dig. Paul's going to show us how. Great, I'm just going to put a return in and then mark your line. Okay, well it's basically two ways of digging a trench. You can either use a spade or you can use a digger. I'll start with a spade just to give you an idea. So you need to go down 200 mils to your mark on your spade, then just stick your foot in the trench, it needs to be at least the width of your boot so you can get the cloth in the bottom. Step two is putting in the waratahs. What are the key points here Paul? Basically you've got to put waratahs in at the end of the fence, any bends and then we're putting them two metres apart which is good practice. Get your measure out, get your dazzle out and just measure a line 400 and just go along. That way you know how far to go down with each one and you get them to at least the right depth. 400 is good practice. If it's a steeper slide you may need to go deeper depending on the soil type. The eyes point into the site or the direction that the runoff will be coming. So make sure they get put them the right way otherwise you're going to have to redo the whole thing once you come to wire it up. We need to put the wire post caps on to get a bit of resistance. Trusty hammer, tap them on, get a zip tie, eye it through. That'll keep the gap on in bad weather. It's a good health and safety visual for people. We're on to step three, wiring up. Uh, now just make sure you wear your glasses anytime you're dealing with wire. Paul, show us how it's done. Basically we're using McAfee silk fence and there's a few marks on here you need to pay attention to. What we're doing as part of good practice is going, we're going to bury it down to the black line. Make sure you line the bottom of the trench with the lower part of the cloth. And just to make sure you get your wires in the right place, just hold the fence up and where the black line, the top black line is, that's going to give you your top wire mark. It's the fourth hole up, so just remember every post is going to be the same. So I'll just pull the wire out and Dan's going to help me uh, unroll it. Top wire is all wired up, now we'll do this middle wire. So just miss one middle wire down and start running the wire off like we did for the top wire. Okay, final step for the wiring up is just to put a bit of tension in your fence and to use that use a strainer. So basically this has got to go in at a 45 degree angle with the eyes pointing towards the first, first post. So basically we're going to run this wire three times between the, the strainer post and the last post, try and pick a, a lower eye on one side and a higher one on the other. Run it through three times and then we'll tension it up. You've got to build it to suit your conditions basically. Stage four, we're almost there, we've just got to pin up the fabric. Take us through it guys. So we've basically got to offer the cloth back up again to the top wire where we measured off. Wrap a bit around the post and tie it off. Take a bit of time tying it off in the first place. Then roll it out to the next post pin it off and we'll continue in stages that way. You've got two options when you're pinning off, you can use the pins 
or we've got butterfly clips, which we'll show you later. Pins are good for short-term fences of this nature, but if it's going to be long-term or heavy-duty fence, you're better off using the butterfly clips from the start. Put the pins every 300 apart or a foot, no old money. Note that the wire is visible on the downhill side of the fence. If you're going to use the clips, just a quick tip. Work all the pins in the clip through the cloth first, then layer the other side of the clip down on top, and you just squeeze it through the holes using your pliers. Step five, the final step. Now we need to backfill. We need to check that the fence is well dug, well spaced, and just uh, double check that the cloth is installed correctly, that there's no damage, and also just check the caps are all wired in correctly. The next stage is to make sure it's well maintained. It needs to be checked every week and before any heavy rain event or after any heavy rain. And uh, if it needs cleaning out, clean it out. That way it's going to last the distance and do the job it's supposed to. Once the work's all completed on site, you're going to want to take the fence down. Basically, a lot of the materials you use can be reused. Uh, your waratahs, your end caps and wire. We've shown you how to complete the installation of the fence, so here's a brief installation checklist to remind you of the steps required. Check location, review safety and equipment, dazzle and dig the trench, install Y posts and yellow caps, install top and middle wires, attach fence fabric, backfill and check installation, ongoing maintenance until removal or recycling on completion of works on site.